Montauk Point at the eastern tip of Long Island has for generations been a favorite haunt of striped bass, surf fishing enthusiasts. For tackle, the old hands at the game use a six foot six to seven foot rod tip with about a 12 thread line on a 2-0 reel. The same tackle generally used when surf fishing for channel bass. A block tin squid is an excellent lure for stripers or rockfish as they are also called. Montauk Lighthouse crowns the cliffs and overlooks these famous fishing grounds at the southern portal of Long Island. Here, where the mighty Atlantic endless holds its white cap against the rocker, find picturesque beauty as well as thrilling sport. What experts send that squid far out into the silvery, tumbling breakers? Stripers in the surf mean white water, and it takes a good arm, plus a considerable amount of skill gained from practice to put the lure out where it belongs. Then it is reeled in past the rocks where the stripers usually lie. Fish are always where you catch them. Knowing the right spots is extremely important. Knowing when to change location is also part of the game and exploring the good places often pays off. But if this kind of fishing wasn't a gamble, it wouldn't be half as much fun. Bang! Something strikes like the crack of a whip. That surging rush repays you for all the casting, reeling, and wishing you've been doing, especially when it's a big one. Never give him slack. Be careful that he doesn't cut your line on a rock and keep on wishing. You can never be sure of a big striper in the surf until you've completely whipped him and he rolls in the shallow water where he can be dragged up the beach. This fish weighed better than 40 pounds, although they have been caught on rod and reel up to 73 pounds. But a 20 pounder caught in the surf means wonderful sport and is just cause for celebration. Another lighthouse at Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, looks down upon a long stretch of famous surf fishing coastline. This lovely beach of yellow sand is one of the finest channel bass sections on the Atlantic coast. And with a specially equipped car as our operating base, we're going to see just how another expert gets results. The well-dressed channel bass fisherman should wear a rod belt with leather socket, gaff, and a few other handy gadgets. In addition to the six foot six or seven foot tip, two O reel and 12 thread line, when channel bass fishing, you should have a pyramid or cone sinker weighing four to six ounces, according to the strength of the current or surf. Properly rigged, it will have free play on your two foot wire leader. A seven O sprout hook is about right. Bait is important, no matter what you're fishing for, in spite of the rare occasions when it seems that the fish will take almost anything. The old standbys used for channel bass are menhaden or bunkers and mullet, especially in the fall, although crabs and fresh squid will take bottom feeding fish of all varieties. Putting the bait on the hook is also important. Don't just slap it on. You'd be surprised how much difference it makes and it's just as easy to bait your hook correctly. With everything ship shape, off we go. And now, Mr. Channel Bass, watch out. 
Snowball, the fishinest dog in the Carolinas, is going to watch to see that everything's done just right. And incidentally, this is Harry Stellwagen, who in 1937 established a world record with a tournament cast of 378 feet. Snowball seems to think something's happening. Channel bass are hooked after you're sure they've really taken the bait. Looks like he needs some help, says Snowball. It's a small one, but it'll look just right on the dinner table. Hey there, partner. Restrain that enthusiasm a bit. Notice the black spot on the tail. That's the Channel Bass trademark. But let's get a bigger one. Sometimes schools of fish lie in the channels along the shore and they can be taken without too much trouble. But these fish are generally not the big ones which every fisherman wants to get. Although this one proves to be far from a record breaker, he's a mighty nice fish. A good thing to remember is that these bass bite in three different ways. Some pick up the bait and drop it several times before making up their minds. Others grab it and run, while some will carry it right in toward the beach. In any case, let the fish swim off until you feel his weight before setting the hook. Even after you're pretty sure that he's well hooked, remember that he has a tender mouth. Keep a tight line at all times and reel in, but don't force him or you'll probably lose your fish and you can't always be too sure that it's a channel bass you've hooked onto. There are other things besides these gamesters out there in the ocean. Plenty of sharks, for example, and now and then a stingray, which carries a dangerous and poisonous stinger in its tail. Snowball enjoys bass fishing but he's one dog that knows the difference when a stingray is brought in. No, sir, he wants no part of that little sea monster. He'll just wait for something better to be caught. time the line spins out in a different manner, which tells the old master that he's into the real thing. The fight is on. Out he goes until the tide catches him and he's swept back in. Out he goes again and again, but each rush becomes shorter and shorter and weaker too, and he's worked closer and closer to the beach. Finally, the big fellow is beached in a few inches of water, where he can be picked up and dragged proudly up onto the sand. He's a big fish, the kind that every surf fisherman dreams about catching. And when he does, he remembers every detail of the fight for the rest of his days. This fish tips the scales at 47 pounds, which is more than enough to round out a wonderful day of surf fishing. <laughs>